Hi, my name's uh, Tim Johnson um, from surveyfunnels.co.uk and I'm delighted to jump on the online prosperity show this episode to share the secrets of how asking a few simple questions of your prospects can absolutely transform your business in doubling your conversions and doubling your opt-in rates, which gives you a 4x result. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've got my man here, Tim Johnson. Tim, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Prosper. Uh, it was great to be here and uh, thank you for welcoming me. I'm really looking forward to our time together today. Fantastic. Now, Tim has a wealth of knowledge in one of digital marketing's best kept secrets, which are surveys. I'll just give you a bit of a... Uh, background to what survey funnels actually are or what survey marketing is. I think it was in 1999, uh, Seth Gordon, he published a book called Permission Marketing, which took a whole new look about how traditional interrupt, interruption marketing is now dead and we're now living in an age where we actually have to ask our prospects permission to talk to them and then build trust with them and then ask for that sale. So that's the reason why I had to pull out Tim um, and so that he can give us a bit of value and his expertise on what a survey funnel actually is, who needs it and why it's particularly important in this day and age to actually ask for the sale from your clients there. Now, Tim, thank you so much for sh coming up on the show today. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you came up to um, establish and start your now new venture, uh, Survey Funnels. Sure. Um, well, I started off life um, you know, back in the 90s with a traditional manufacturing business. You know, we made cupboard systems and I took that from, because I knew I was never going to make it in the corporate world. I couldn't play the politics. So I always knew getting into my own business was, was the way forward. So yeah, I bought into a small failing joinery company and turning over 200,000. And over eight years, we built that to 4 million turnover, 50 staff, great big factories, machinery, vehicles, you, know, you name it, you know, the, the traditional business. And it was, it was great fun. It was a great achievement. There's a great bunch of people. And, um, we did really well and I had, you know, all the trappings of success, big house, big mortgage, big car. And my big car was a big fat Lexus at the time. I drove around a country lane a little bit too fast one evening and managed to flip it upside down, slide down an embankment and um, yeah. And fortunately the, 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 the mind does amazing things and it blanks that little bit out. But the first thing I can remember is standing on the side of the road, looking down at my upside down car, wondering what the hell do I do next? And um, to cut a long story short, I eventually wandered down the road, found a little country house, banged on the, the door to let me in. This was about one o'clock in the morning, a dark uh, November night, way back in 2001. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, the woman who answered the door eventually was a theatre nurse. So um, she laid me down a, a hallway, kept me conscious while the ambulance arrived. And then the next thing I knew, the surgeon wakes me up on the ward the following day, apologizing for amputating my arm, the elbow on the right arm. But lucky to be alive, lucky um, left-handed. And uh, I thought I was going to lose all my arm because it was also flapping from the shoulder. That took a couple of years to heal, but that's a, another story. So... Um, it came time to sell my shares in that business and I took time out, went back to university, took an MBA, traditional, you know, traditional manufacturing business, traditional education, took an MBA. Yeah, I went out and set up a, a consultancy, I trained as a mediator and I set up a consultancy called Business Mediation. Nobody really got it, but I went networking with that and through this networking thing, I landed out co-founding a business breakfast network called Four Networking, which in the UK went from nothing back in 2006 to a complete national network and a small, um, um, uh, about half a dozen groups in Sydney, actually, because you're Melbourne, aren't you? And uh, uh, yes, yeah, six groups in Sydney, I think. And, um, and then, you know, kind of my work was done. I was a business strategy. I set the, you know, the structure of the systems, um, the, all the back end stuff. They used to call me the wizard behind the curtains. And I, my business partner was a, yeah, an effervescent, uh, dy dynamo character a guy called Brad Burton. And, um, yeah, my work was done. So, you know, I sold my shares, moved on and, um, 
and then went through my whole sort of midlife crisis really you know trying to think what it's all about I built two successful businesses and you know the kids had left home and you know the kind of inevitable divorce thing and uh, I took some time out so I wrote uh, the success book um which was published by Lid Publishing and then that was all about well if this success isn't out there when then you know is it right here right now and uh, but if it's right here right now then why get off the sofa so I thought try to think okay well that's where the second book meaningful success came along which is well you know if out there when is an external thing and right here right now is an internal thing you've got two things going on which is external and internal and then if you got what you create you know externally is, is you know it's a thing about creation but how you feel about yourself is how you connect so if you connect with connection creation internal and external makes a four by four grid and that's the um, an interesting and insightful journey in that book both of them available on amazon um or kindle and um and then i did all the get rich quick schemes property left field tax planning um buying distressed businesses for a pound and flipping them and, and that kind of thing and they're all okay but it's you know these kind of left field edgy things are left field and edgy for a reason you know <laughs> and, uh, so it's great experience and great learning but actually yeah one of my things about having a business is i used to call it it's like brighton rock it's like having this seamless core that's consistent all the way through but yeah it's difficult to articulate and meaningful success is kind of all that you get every, everything lined up properly because that's when you focus on what you're doing and do it really well and really deeply and you make it from the start to the finish everything's aligned and works through then you, you kind of can't fail and um and then i thought you know i built two multi-million pound businesses to get a nice lifestyle as well as the the, the fun of doing it um but also, you know, I'm getting into my mid age and I'm not sure I had the energy to set up these huge you know, manufacturing plant or, or a network with, you know, tens of thousands of members and, and, and team members, you know, a thousand team members and all those you know, traveling. You know, you're always out traveling on the road and, and, and so on. It's great fun, but you know, yeah, maybe there's gotta be an easier way. And, um, Jeff Walker of you know, Product Launch Formula fame, you know, talks about the five freedoms. Well, he calls them four freedoms. I, I, I come up with five, you know, which is, we, and who's not going to want? Yeah. Freedom location, be able to work where you want, you know, the laptop lifestyle. Financial freedom, you know, to have enough to pay your bills and have plenty left over. Um, you know, we don't have to be gazillionaires overnight, but actually worrying about money is a pain in the ass, you know. Um, to have the freedom to do the work you love something you're passionate about the freedom to choose the people you work with because actually if you're working with our souls you know what it's it's life's not great um and you can only do that if you're not desperate for work and if you've got enough leads coming in that you can actually you know afford to let the people you don't want to work with go on by and um and, and the fifth one of course is time you know if you're working all hours to make it all happen that's hard work so the, the whole thing about uh, that is about how do you make more income and more impact um, and do that without stress. And I'd been through a lot of internet marketing training because the internet marketing is the way forward allows you to actually have more impact and more income and all the flexibility of where and when you work. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of stuff, you know, Rip, you know, stinging it large, you know, doing a big one. You know, you can be an instant success. Just follow my exact same steps, and, and you too can be a gazillionaire in a nanosecond. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and so I spent literally you know, two years and tens of thousands of pounds on, on training, and and eventually I came across um, Ron Levesque and the Ask Method. Um, this is his book. Um, it's not the sexiest to cover, but um, it's a great book, and. Um, I got onto his program and he turns things on its head because rather than buy my stuff, you ask a question. What's important to you? What's your biggest challenge? What's, what you, know, you find out and you seek to understand your audience before you seek to be understood yourself as you know, um, Covey's seven habits talks about. I then it transforms everything. De definitely. And, uh, and then you build a funnel based on that knowledge and that's when it all gets really exciting.
Understandable. Thank you so much for that, uh, you know, insight back into your life and, um, you know, the, the mishap that you went through and, you know, that didn't stop you. And now you are on a mission to create and relate for those that you're going to be, um, you know, getting money off of. So you did mention quite a lot of, you know, business experience and, uh, you know, a few things that you did in the past. What would you say out of all the things that you went through has been the biggest lesson for you so far? I think, you know, the biggest lesson for anybody in business, um, uh, and there are a few key things, you know, it's about focus, purpose, and passion. Um, because if you put those three together, you, you really can't go wrong because all the business are built up from startup. You, you know, it's really easy to get into the comparison game, thinking you know you're not good enough as as as, as the guys have already been around the block for a few times. And actually, you know, you've got to have you're going to have a different angle on what you're doing because of why you're starting, and you're going to have some you know, some passion and focus around it. And with that passion and focus and dedication, but keeping to a path. That's the whole purpose thing, because the purpose is two sides. You've got to have a, a purpose inside you that drives you. But you've also got to have a purpose as in you've got to do it on purpose. It's deliberately, you know, by choice, by design. I remember when, you know, for networking, a couple of years in, and, we, we, you know, we'd grown faster than any network had grown in the UK. And people said, are you surprised how quickly it's grown? And I said, no, I expect it to go faster, actually, because you know, it wasn't by chance. It was by design. And that's about doing something on purpose. You know, if you want to grow a business, it doesn't happen by accident. Yeah, you know, Steve Jobs and Apple, or uh, Elon Musk, or Lego, or any of these business, you know, large businesses, they don't they don't grow by mistake. <laughs> they, they grow on purpose. And understandable. You have to be intentional about the work that you're putting in. And you did mention focus, which is follow one course until successful. So. Pretty much when it comes to, um, you know, asking money off of our customers, we really need to be serving um, them or serving a purpose mm. or fixing a problem that our customers have. And we can't specifically know what they're going through unless we ask or we ask, we get information from them. Okay. So the work that you're working now which is the survey formula is designed to collect data and then segment the leads that you'll be putting through the funnel can you just walk us through um you know your day-to-day -day activities while you helping your customers with survey funnels what what is it that you're actually doing and why is it important okay i mean there's four stages four fundamental stages to, to a survey funnel um and that is seek, which is seek to understand um, what your about, what your clients' pains are, yeah, what kind of buckets they're in, uh, to segment and segment them into different buckets, um, and then think about your steps that you're going to take. So you'll be, be a product staircase, or the progression you're going to take your prospects through into into clients, and from a yeah a one-time offer to yeah, an initial thing to how do you get them to be uh, you know, continuity product. So they stay with you from you know, starting as a prospect to staying with you as a long-term customer. So you're not having to permanently reinvent the wheel. And then once you've got that working is how do you scale? How do you stack your funnels? How do you grow? How do you do joint venture stuff? And, and, and so it goes on. So um, from seek to understand segment, take people through stages of steps and then you can scale. So that's your, your four S's to a survey funnel understandable so once you found out who these people are you segment them depending on the needs um, at that particular time and then whatever steps you're going to be taking them through and then scaling for what sort of products can you use a survey funnel for um, for it to be actually meaningful and have full impact well it's it's you're hard pressed to think of uh, yeah, almost a a business where it's not meaningful um, because yeah unless you're doing something like I, I, I mean you think about it, you go to any website mm -hmm. and 
you land there as, as the first time and you think well, where do i go you know there's loads of content it's like a it's like a brick wall of s content and stuff and it's like well does this fit to me is this and it's all about me 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 you know we 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 uh, people we were take solicitors or accountants they're, they're, they're the, the, the favorite isn't it yeah that's it. yeah <laughs> we're tried and tested safe and stable we've been around for years and years that's why you should use us well what about asking questions like yeah hi yeah what, what sort of size business are you or, your, or your business or an individual what are your challenges um and then from that you give a bit of a data sheet maybe a, a bit of a video with some of the issues and say well book a call and 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 actually, if you download this, the, 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 these few uh, cheat sheets, then we can, yeah, you'll be pre-prepared and we'll have a much more valuable free call. Um, it's like that'd be revolutionary for a, for a lawyer or an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But if you had, for example, let's say you're selling um, skincare products, for example, and you've got a complete range it's like, well, actually, if you ask a question, and it's like, well, you, it's like going into a store and you're bamboozled by the, 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 the too much choice. It's like kid in the sweet shop. It's like, I don't know what to get. Whereas you say, well, okay, are you a man or a woman? What's your skin type? What sort of issues do you have? Um, what age you've got? And, and so on. So you, half a dozen simple questions, and then you can then recommend, based on the answers you provide, we reckon this uh, and we we'll give you a special offer on them. It's like shit that fits. You give me a great offer and it's relevant for me. Why am I not going to buy? Great stuff. So when you're putting out these survey questions, is there any specific questions that you need to ask or are you just generally fact finding so that you can be of best service to your customers? Uh, well, of course there's the, there is a, the, the, there's a whole, um, you know, there's a whole masterpiece to, to, to surveys because right. first of all, who, who wants to provide a survey? So, um, and I once was a restaurant and there was a fantastic waitress and uh, she wanted to get you know, uh, her brownie points up and the way she did that was answering the survey. And the survey was unbelievably long. It took to like 15 minutes to, to uh, respond. And if it wasn't for the, 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 personality of the waitress there's no way i'd ever ever completed that survey so first of all people don't um don't answer survey so you actually say actually if you're emailing your list and you want to what we call a, a deep dive discovery survey is you're going to be asking the single most important question and you say actually i'm looking for your advice people love to share their advice or you're looking for your opinion and he said when it comes to x which is the problem that you solve in your business um so for me it's like when it comes to getting more of the right clients what's the single biggest challenge or frustration or difficulty you know find a sort of word that you have um that you're experiencing and then be as detailed as specific as you can and the reason we ask that is because you're asking about what have you, difficulty have you experienced in other words you're finding what people don't like and you're finding out what's happened in the past and the reason we do that is very specific because if you ask people what they want they don't know <laughs> henry ford you know, classic yeah you know, henry ford henry said you know if you ask people what they want they want faster horses steve jobs said people don't know what they want until you show it them and um, yeah if i ask you you know should we go to the restaurant tonight and say yeah sure where do you want to go well, I don't know. It goes round and round circles. <laughs> but if I ask you, you know, where's the last time you went out? What was the restaurant like? What, you know, you could tell me really accurately what, what, what you had to eat. You could tell me what the waiter was like. You could tell me what the experience was. If I said to you, staying with the restaurant analogy, what makes a great restaurant? What are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me something like good food, good service, decent price, nice ambiance something like right. yeah something along those lines it's not very useful because of course if you're in a restaurant business of course you know people want that but if, yeah. you, if i ask you you say okay what don't you like about your last you know your last meal you could get really detailed about that there'd be something that really pissed you off that was you know really specific and it's from that data that you can start to improve and understand understandable so from what you're saying 
definitely you can also use this um, method of service to actually generate specific content for these customers if they're not ready to make a purchase at that particular time, right? Well, there is that. But you see, from the deep dive survey, and by asking about people's pain points and you're asking about what's happened in the past, it both gets accurate and detailed. You can start to build up a picture, a deep, rich picture of your client's world. And when you do that across scale, you could do two things. Is one, you can realize that people in different categories. And yeah, you've got to, you know, the, the idea is to try and get 80% of your marketplace because you're never going to get everybody into yeah. three to five buckets or categories or segments. Right. And yeah. then from the data you got, by, you can create a rich story that really resonates with them. So when you're talking about your email copy, your landing pages, your videos, that you draw out those elements of pain and frustration that people got and think, yeah, they nail me. Then you have them, you have their attention. And yeah, back to Seth Godin, per, yeah, permission marketing. Yeah, gaining attention in the marketplace is the single hardest thing to do. And that is because most people are shooting their shit. Whereas actually if you turn it around and speak to your client's language in a way that you better understand than they understand themselves, you have their attention. Understandable. So with that attention, which is the new currency right now, because if you are not being seen on the market, there's no way somebody would jump into your survey. In the, in the event that somebody jumps onto your survey, uh, is there a need for you to make the survey engaging and entertaining? Or can you just ask them blunt questions just so you can get that information and um, be on your way? Um, uh, yes and no, it depends on your market. Um, yeah, there's, there's, if you're in a serious business, then yeah, having, you know, what Harry Potter character you are, which might be a really engaging and fun quiz, may not be relevant if you're a, you know, trying to generate leads for your law practice. Um, because yeah, one of the things, if you're going to do a, a bit of a bribe, for example, to get people to, to, to uh, fill out your survey, um, it, needs to be re it needs to be aligned with what you're doing. So there's no point offering a free iPad or a, you know, a, a meal out or a, or a holiday or whatever, because you're going to attract the people who want the freebie and not who are interested in your product or service. Right. So the key is about keeping it short, keeping it relevant, um, and getting, if you are going to put a bribe, make it relevant to your business. Because the whole thing is, is if you imagine um, that, you get a phone call, you know, you, and you get some insurance salesman trying to sell you something. Yeah. And you, you don't want to, you, you, you don't want to know. Whereas if you're waiting for a report from the GP, your doctor, um, cause you just had some, some medical tests and the line's really bad because you want to know you, 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 you're going to properly listen, even if it's a crackly bad line, cause you want the information. So if you're interested enough in the topic that, that the survey's to do with, then actually you put up with it not being the funniest thing because you're interested in actually getting something insightful at the end of it. Because if you can do a quiz which says, actually follow this quiz and you're going to discover which is the right thing for you, but I, you know, it's, it's worthwhile me putting the, the two or three minutes to answer half a dozen questions. Great stuff. Now, for the entrepreneurs that are watching this uh, show right now, is there any tools that you can recommend for them to utilize or is there any plugins that they can use so they can start creating these uh, survey funnels for themselves? Um, I mean, there are loads and loads of um, survey funnels, uh, survey software on the market, you know, from... Uh, but the one I use in particular is it's called bucket.io um, because it allows you lots of branching logic. Uh, it allows you to put a Facebook pixel on it so you can retarget people who have taken the survey even if they haven't actually put their details in. So they don't have to supply their email address, uh, which means you're going to get much better engagement. And also lots of analytics behind the scenes so you can really... Um, because the, the, yeah, the, the money's in the data. Yeah, money's in deeply understanding, and that, that comes with the analysis. 
Understandable. So somebody would have been watching this show right now there, Tim, and they're really excited to know a little bit more about, um, you know, how they can also start utilizing survey funnels. How can people get a hold of you then? Uh, then get a hold of me at survey funnels with an S on the end dot co dot UK. Um, of course, it's, it's digital working. So whilst I'm based in the UK, I can work anywhere. Great stuff. Obviously, like we mentioned right at the start of this show, um, you know, people like Seth Gordon have been talking about this since the year 1999. So this is not anything pretty new, but it is very important now. So you can stand out in the noise that's on online, um, you know, by actually knowing what your customers want and delivering that to them. Because um, as Tim mentioned earlier on, if you actually understand the needs um, of your customers better than they understand them themselves and providing them a product that actually, um, you know, satisfies whatever problem they might be going through or solves a, a quest they might be going through, then they would know, like, and trust you. And people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Well, Tim, I can't thank you enough for your time today, your expertise and your knowledge, and also your story um, about how you, you know, became who you are today and somebody we can learn off of today. Have you got any last words for our viewers today, uh, Tim? No, it's been it's great to be with you, Prosper. And, you know, as you say, the, the Ask is never going to go out of fashion. If when you, when we meet somebody face to face, we don't just go and blast buy my stuff. We ask a few questions first to find, and we tailor our message. And that asking some simple questions to tailor the message that you give people is the heart of the ask method and it's it's time it was universal online as a way it is universal offline understandable so literally just because your customers have swiped right it doesn't mean they're ready to netflix and chill with you you still have to ask for permission for you to actually generate leads from them and with service final with survey funnels you will be able to segment your leads on the fly and actually um you know know exactly um, what your customers need before they ask. Thank you so much once again, Tim, for your time today. Absolute pleasure. It's been great talking with you. Thank, thank you so much.